uh, we have a O run for the uh, access layer. We have a O Mac for the call layer. We are talking recently for the edge. But how we can connect those components together, we need a transport network. But no one talked except uh, these guys here uh, talking about uh, the uh, important uh, transport network. In fact, uh, based on our uh, experience, uh, such as for uh, 4G, uh, uh, in order to build a 4G, uh, a lot of uh, operators even takes, uh, took uh, more than 30% investment. So the transport network is a very big business. And we also need a uh, re-architecture. So here, I would like to give uh, some consideration on that. Uh, I have uh, four different, uh, uh, four uh, items. The first one is uh, uh, the requirements and the challenge. And the second one is uh, how we can uh, evolve, uh, uh, the, uh, get to the evolution solution. And uh, the third one is, uh, uh, the topic about uh, SPN just now, uh, what we uh, expert have uh, mentioned. And the third one, how we can use it. In fact, uh, for SPN, we have deployed that. And uh, uh, in uh, next month, we will begin the 5G services for our customer. And uh, the service will, running, will run on the SPN network. Uh, so uh, for the challenge, and uh, uh, from uh, uh, operator angle, I think uh, there are three main challenges. The first one is uh, the 5G network architecture changed. Uh, we know the 5G run changed, and uh, uh, we will have a CU and DU separated. Uh, we will have more C run uh, deployment. And uh, the 5G core also changed. The core will be based on cloud, and uh, uh, the UPF may be uh, 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 closer to the user. So the MEC will be everywhere. And uh, uh, so the total network architecture of 5G changed dramatically. And the second one is uh, the service requirement changes. Uh, the bandwidth increasing 10 times, more than 10 times. And uh, the latency lower even more than 10 times. And the sync, synchronization, uh, accuracy increasing more than 10 times. And uh, as well as we need uh, the uh, network slicing. That's all the big challenge for us. Uh, except those uh, uh, visible uh, challenge, we also have some uh, uh, challenge in the infrastructure, fiber because the C1 will be uh, uh, the majority uh, deployment. That means we need uh, more and more fiber cores at the access layer. And uh, the machine room, the facility, will also be a big challenge. And we need to uh, install uh, a lot of BBU at one room. And uh, how we can provide the power consumption, how we can uh, provide uh, uh, such as uh, uh, the uh, uh, the cooling system, something like that. So all those will drive. We re-architect the network. Before we uh, talk about our solution, we would like to give a, a history of the network. And uh, in the last three decades, in fact, uh, there's no big change. And uh, the layer one, we have a WDM. Layer, uh, layer zero, we have a WDM. Layer one, we have SDH. And uh, layer two, we have ESnet. Layer three, we have uh, IP. In order to uh, carry uh, 3G and 4G, a lot of uh, operators uh, change the, their network from uh, the TDM-based SDH network to the packet-based, uh, we call that uh, IP1 network, or the PTN network. And uh, uh, IP1 and PTN, in fact, uh, integrated uh, 
uh, some uh, uh, basic factors of a previous network, uh, such as the PTN, it based on Ethernet switch, but it uh, and some uh, uh, MPRS uh, uh, functions, it uh, uh, reused some uh, OEM uh, uh, solutions from SDH. But uh, for the next generation 5G network, we might just now we mentioned the uh, uh, issue. And uh, we have uh, three basic uh, con considerations. The first one, the IP network, the IP will be the future. And uh, we have to support uh, Ethernet in the future. And uh, the second one is uh, we should uh, integrate uh, the layer, layer zero to layer three together. Because we have a big, we need the big bandwidth. We need the flexible routing. And we need the small room to put it. So we have to integrate the layer, uh, layer zero to layer three function together. And uh, uh, just now, uh, Huawei uh, experts have given the hard isolation value. I think it's really uh, the important functions for the future network. So we have to consider combine the TDM and the packet routing together to this system. So in order to support this one, we introduced the, the SPN uh, about three years ago. And uh, uh, the SPN integrated this uh, functions together with a very smart way. Uh, just now, uh, uh, the last topic uh, which I have mentioned, we just uh, bring in some uh, change in the PCS layer of Ethernet uh, stack and then achieved the, the solution. And uh, here is the uh, SPN architecture. Uh, we can see in the uh, bottom, we have a WDM we have Ethernet fly. In the layer one, we have a TDM switch. And this TDM switch based on the uh, Ethernet PCS layer block. We call that a 64 bit block. And uh, with that block slot, and we can get a very good TDM function. And with the TDM function, we can achieve the hard isolation. And based on the PCS layer, and we can set up the packet layer. The packet layer with a MAC layer and the IP layer. The MAC layer here is totally the same with the, the one defined in HPE. So in this architecture, for the physical layer, we can reuse the Ethernet optical module. We can reuse all the functions which have been defined in ITU on the WDM function. In the layer three, we can reuse all the function which defined, all the protocol which defined in ITF. So this system can uh, share the Ethernet chip uh, in that street chain. So that's a very good design. And uh, uh, let's see the network. And uh, for the network, we can cover from the front hall to the back hall to the middle hall and uh, provide the end-to-end -end, uh, connection. And uh, in the uh, access layer, we can use uh, 50 gig Ethernet or 100 gig Ethernet. And uh, in the aggregation layer and the core layer, we can use a, a colorful uh, Ethernet interface. Uh, which can support WDM. So based on this network, we can provide a really good and a real network slice 5G service. And uh, how can we achieve that? Let's see the layer zero function. And uh, uh, we just mentioned uh, uh, we invite, uh, uh, we will introduce a new function currently which uh, defined in ITU G.MTN standard. In that uh, standard, uh, give a very good uh, function, 
one key function is that it decouple the uh, Ethernet module read and the MAC read. That means uh, through the G.MTN, we can combine several hundred giga Ethernet port together to support uh, a big pipe. That big pipe uh, is uh, uh, one pipe instead of a separated pipe. If we support WDM, that will provide a very good function. That means we can reuse currently 100 giga Ethernet uh, module and combine several hundred, uh, hundred, several hundred uh, giga module together to provide uh, such as uh, 400 giga, even one terabit 100 giga Ethernet pipe in the Mac layer. So that's great. And with that big pipe, we can virtualize the bandwidth to 5G to our business customer to even broadband. So let's see Leo 1. Leo 1 is um, really uh, good uh, functions. We give the 66-bit block the slot, and we switch the slot, something like SDH, and then we get the hard pipe. And uh, as well, we give the OM, this OM like the SDH OM, that provide a really good photo monitoring and the performance manage, ma measurement. So with this one, we create the TDM functions within the Ethernet stack. And uh, for the L2 and L3 functions, we can use uh, the segment routing. In order to meet the 5G transport network uh, functions, we extend the, uh, uh, the segment routing. We call that a path segment. With the path segment, we can trace the end-to-end -end L3 stream. It will provide a good monitoring in the stream layer. And uh, uh, the synchronization. So synchronization is really important for 5G. And uh, through the SPN, we can provide uh, uh, five nanosecond per hop. Because uh, in the layer one, we have uh, some timestamp functions. So for the end-to-end, -end, we even provide less than 100 nanosecond time error. So that's great. That means uh, for the base station, we don't need uh, the GPS module there. We dis distribute uh, the synchronization through the transport network. And uh, SDN, in, the, uh, in this conference, I think uh, Nick Macon gave a great uh, uh, presentation on the SD next step. And uh, uh, the phase three SDN, he mentioned that we should have a closed loop. Uh, I think we totally agree with him. This figure, uh, we draw that uh, in three years ago. I think we have a totally the same uh, uh, sense with him. So we need a closed loop control. How we can get the closed loop? In the forwarding layer, we need a real-time awareness of the network topology and the forwarding. And through some interface such as BGP RS, we send the real-time feedback to the control controller. And on the controller, the service path will do the online decision to adjust the routing to do the protection, as well as from the controller to the forwarding. We have the uh, uh, deliver the pass uh, result, the calculation result, and uh, to adjust the, the network uh, in real time.
So that will get a uh, uh, closed loop can true. With the, those functions, we will build the equipment. And this equipment, we have uh, the TDM function, have the packet switching, have a uh, optical uh, WDM, and uh, simplified OEDM. So with those kind of a solution, we can provide powerful uh, network connection. And uh, what kind of a service we can provide? The real network slicing. The transport network slicing. We know network slicing we are discussing, uh, we, we have discussion on the core network, on the RAN network, but without the transport network support, we cannot achieve end-to-end -end network slicing. So this function is really important. Through the closed-loop SDN control and the TDM and the packet integrated for the layer, we can achieve very flexible network slicing. And uh, we even provide uh, different uh, customers with uh, the totally isolated network slicing service. So that's great. It's not only for 5G. It's the basic, uh, uh, basic services to our customer in future. So our industry, and uh, about uh, three years ago, we began uh, to develop this uh, system. And until now, uh, we have uh, the large scale field uh, deployment. And uh, uh, I just mentioned the next month we will provide our customer 5G uh, services. All those services will run on this network. And we have a lot of uh, uh, industry partner, uh, Huawei, ZTE, Ericsson, Nokia, uh, they, they are the vendor. And uh, we also have uh, uh, cheap partners such as Broadcom, uh, Syntec, Xenix. And uh, we also have a very rich test instrument partners such as VRV, Sprint, Exfo. All of them have already provided the commercialized solution for SPA. So next step, could we do something in ONF? Because ONF is very good at on SD uh, solution, both the standard and the open source. So we would like to work together with uh, ONF uh, friends and uh, to see next step if we can do more things. Thank you.